What's going on Babylonians? It's me, Songs of Rays, and I'm back on the channel bringing some more sync content your way. Now, if you're like me and you're trying to get the, the biggest increase in power that you can in this game, and you're trying to farm for those extra codex points because those are huge amounts of kind of boost, especially with some of them that boost your weapon damage by 50% each time you go into them, then you're probably interested to find out how we can get to the highest wave possible when it comes to Salvage Run 2. Now, Salvage Runs are your daily missions. You do have up to four chances every single day to try and farm these out. Out, and they give you some really nice results. The only one that's a bit of a letdown is going to be number three because it does seem to be very, very rare that you do get legendary mods out of it. But if they do increase that drop rate, then I can see that being a worthwhile farm. And you definitely need a build to go in there with something that's a bit baseline that works really, really nicely so that you can then go in there and always hit that max amount, which is going to be wave 19. Now, anything that's after that, you can potentially get some extra drops to come from the elite. And we, what we're going to do is discuss my current build that's able to just absolutely churn through waves. In fact, the gameplay that you've probably seen in the background is showing you that I managed to get to wave 28, which is kind of insane for 11.3k power, but I'm going to show you everything that I currently know, everything that my kind of experience. I'm also going to talk about my default loadout, and then we're just going to be able to explain it so you can get as far as I did, or maybe even further. If you do enjoy this type of content, if you want to see more from ourselves, then make sure to drop that like and subscribe. It really does help the channel out, and it helps you to so you can find your way back for more sync content in the future. But with all that said and done, what are we waiting for? Let's dive right into it. Okay, so there's a couple of ground rules we do need to be able to cover. So we do have our basic loadout that we do take in with us. These are always just guaranteed. This confirms what weapon we're taking. This confirms what load there, like mods we're taking. It confirms what nano and runner we're taking. And then we can pick everything else up from the exchange mods that we do get inside the menu when it comes to being able to get into the actual salvage run. Now, I'll discuss a little bit of a strategy that I currently stand by when going into that. And we'll do that very shortly and we'll go through that together. So what we'll do is we'll have a look at the default loadout that I currently run and then we'll work from there so if I press the tab button we can see what I currently have now don't be put off by the fact that I do have red mods you can easily swap these in with yellow mods and even their purple variants if you do have them they're just not going to be as effective but you do you can still use it use it to great effect you can still do this absolutely fine you don't necessarily need red mods in fact you'll find that the majority of these don't actually give me any extra bonuses to what I'm trying to do so if we go into runner I go as standard into Ragnar now, there are a couple of choices that you can go for here if you don't want to go for Ragnar. Uh, the reason a couple others that you can try are going to be like Park because he's able to regenerate ammo into his gun every single time you get a weak point kill which is really nice. He also has an ability that allows it to bounce around walls and deal damage and also shock affliction which can be quite nice if you do get the affliction based mods. It can also be pretty good for being able to hit enemies from behind walls. Uh, other ones I would probably recommend Glory. Glory is brilliant for extra weak point damage and you also have access to a smoke bomb which while it does obscure your vision it does actually linger for a long time, uh, meaning that you can actually do a lot, a bit of like quite a bit of AOE damage when nanos spawn in on a subsequent rounds. So you will ling linger for there for a good two to three rounds, depending on how fast you are. Uh, so she is another great shout. The reason why I've gone for Ragnar is one, I've got stun mods. Uh, built into my loadout and I've also got it so that I can heal myself up so I only go for a one to two armor uh, this gives me the most amount of radius to be able to spend on other perks so it, being able to heal myself back up means I don't have to spend anything on med kits I don't have to spend any excess on uh, additional armor levels to be able to survive or anything like that I just have a reliable way of having some sustain as well as a kind of like panic button in case anyone gets too close I can then just instantly stun them and we're good to go so that covers the runner, so let's have a quick look into the weapon of choice. I have gone for the Spliss Ender. I think because how salvage runs kind of work, uh, it's all about crowd control. It's all about being able to uh, hit enemies like a bunch of them all at the exact same time and split ender does that job absolutely perfectly now technically you could make an argument for crescendo but mine isn't high enough uh, for me to justify taking in whereas my split ender is up to tier four and because it's got three refraction targets absolutely amazing it seems to take the exact same base damage and hits it over, over several targets anyway and this also works really nicely with some of the mods we're going to be going in for in a second so i do really enjoy split ender so you probably you can get away with this at lower ranks as well you can get away with this at a tier one tier tier zero just know that won't have as many refraction and targets and it won't do as much damage but you definitely can get away with doing that because the majority of the damage we're going to be doing is actually going to be coming from our mods. 
Now, you are allowed to take a nano in, but personally, I don't really rate any of them. I don't really stop to be able to do the animation because it does take up some of that like needful time uh, to be able to start pushing for those higher ranks. Now, if you do want to go for one, I would probably recommend either the Crusher or the Suppressor. The Suppressor is really, really good uh, at being able to tighten up your hip fire. So if you do consistently always have it on your arm, then you can always just make yourself a little bit more accurate in that kind of mode. But it's not really like a deal breaker or anything like that. And the same with the Crusher. The Crusher is pretty good. It allows you to have an extra movement speed at the end just so you can mop things up uh, it's pretty good as like a kind of like stun which works really really nicely in terms of what the build we're going to be going into so there are a couple of options uh, but personally I don't go for my nano unless I absolutely need to so you can just put in anything that you want on this now, in terms of mod choices, this is where it's going to become very vitally important because these are going to be your consistent mods that you're allowed to take in. And while you can get some of these to be able to drop from the uh, the exchange inside of salvage runs, uh, sometimes it's just better just to always just have them on your loadout. So the main ones that I go for are going to be stun and gun. What this does is this allows us to mop up the floor with elites because elites are the things that will just eat up your time, uh, especially when they're in their downed but not out stage and they just have that massive damage reduction built in. You're just there, either there focusing your fire on them, which is going to be wasting your ammo, meaning you're going to have to go to an ammo box, or it means that you're going to have to get a nano and be able to then do the uh, the execute command with them. It once again, just eats up time. What stun and gun does effectively, though, is that if you do manage to stun enemies, especially those elites, which we're going to be focusing on first, we're able to get them in a stun state, and then once they reach that low health threshold, they'll be instantly deleted before going into that down and out uh, uh, kind of down but not out state, and that means they don't get that damage reduction. They just instantly get Get deleted and that just saves you so much time to start pushing forward i highly recommend being able to grab stun and gun especially once we combine it with some of the other mods and especially with split ender because we're able to hit so many enemies all at the same time stun and gun is absolutely perfect we also have mod port 2 we have parting gift this is going to be our aoe damage so because everything that we do with split ender is going to be bullets uh, we're not going to be firing any extra projectiles or anything like that nothing's going to be eating up the chances of parting gift working this means that we're able to just deploy a bunch of explosives all at the same time and because they're all exploding at the same time it's just really good aoe clear it's really good for being able to weaken uh, like uh, nanos we can uh, elites we can primes everything like that it's just a really good mod and it's really consistent so i would recommend being able to grab that in terms of port 3 i have gone for weak point stun the reason why this is so good is that because this is going to work in tandem with our stun and gun along with our ability as ragnar uh, to be able to stun uh, elites in themselves so we're going to always be focusing or trying to hit those weak points and that means that eventually we will be able to stun them and then once we've stunned them we get extra damage as you can tell from the stun damage but then we also get the extra from stun and gun once they get to a certain health threshold they'll be instantly deleted and this is just the main combo that's going to be wiping the floor with those primes and then lastly we have port 4 and this is going to be prime stunner now you could go you could make an argument uh of being able to go for something like skill thrill if you really really want to mess about with that one and you can also make an argument for armor transfer now depending on if you need a little bit more tankiness maybe you're not a high enough power power level uh to survive some of these later waves armor transfer is going to be the one that's going to keep you in the fight it's absolutely amazing especially when paired with the split ender because you're going to be breaking so much armor that you're just going to be consistently refreshing and you become one of the tankiest runners that ever existed in the meridian alternatively like i said you can go for skill thrill but what this does is every time you activate your skill you're able to deal 50 percent base gun damage on top of what you're already doing and this because of how split ender works does spread out to the other targets which is really really nice so if you want a dps phase then you can go for skill thrill but like i said the reason why i've gone for prime stunner is because we're trying to stun them with weak point stun we're going to be instantly deleting that main target with stun and gun and then once we've extra we've killed them once we've executed them with that the prime stunner is then going to work to spread that stun to other nearby nanos and because of how salvage runs are kind of set up it means that all and all the nanos in a certain lane are going to be stood right next to each other and they're all going to become stunned meaning that we can then once again start deleting them with stun and gun it really is a very effective combination being able to go for these four mods and this works absolute wonders once we get into those salvage runs now if you want a quick look as to what i currently have for my codex you can see pretty much here uh, most of the things that you do want to like they're going to be working for this build are going to be your health they're going to be your weak point damage same with weak point damage here i will be grabbing this extra critical damage once I've done one more run which we'll, we'll do together in a second uh, extra armor extra health is just really really nice uh, but also being able to grab long distance master if you are going for the split ender because this gives us a hundred percent kind of increase to our assault rifle damage it doesn't quite work out to a flat 100% it doesn't actually double our damage or anything like that because of how the calculations and all that kind of work it's closer to I think I saw over in the discord once you've got two points into this it's around about like 30 maybe 40% uh, 
uh, damage increase. So don't don't be too fooled by this. It's not like a huge massive increase, but for, for the points, for the codex and everything like that, it is pretty massive. Uh, so you can see what I've got for there. And then lastly, in our companion, but like I said, I'm not using my companion nano, but just in case you do choose to, feel free to be able to take a copy of what I currently use there. So we're going to go pop into a salvage room. We're going to show you a couple of my designs, kind of like theories in terms of like choices that I make when it comes to the exchange mods. And then from there, we'll be able to do a run and just see how high we can actually get into it. So hopefully this information will help you out. Now, just because I'm using legendary gun does not mean you cannot achieve similar results with like a blue. Uh, the deadly tortoise as well as the pocket rocket are also amazing choices, but you can go for something very, very similar with these uh, to be able to start spreading all that stun, be able to get all those damage, be able to get all those kills and it'll work just fine. Uh, from this, I always grab at least one armor. We also want to be able to grab this run modifier of weak point damage because that's what we're aiming for. Chain Breaker is amazing, so we'll grab that. Always try to increase the amount of damage that your gun will be doing as standard. We're ignoring every single one of these nano mods because we're not interested. Fliction Spreader is really, really nice. That's going to help us out when combined with another mod. Energy Rounds is quite nice as well. Afflicted Armor is going to be the main thing that's going to be spreading, uh, so it's going to be great. One Hit Wonder is brilliant if we can grab that. We're not too interested in anything here. Same again. Uh, NG round affliction. Brilliant. We're not interested in that. We're not interested in knockback. Hard hitting is huge. Birds of a feather is absolutely wonders. And then we just keep an eye on our radio. So we do need to either grab something from here or we need to grab some extra armor. So what we'll do is we'll just grab a knockback explosion because sometimes your guns do uh, knock back in of themselves. Uh, just from just being just the standard. So let's just grab that and just see if we can get some extra damage right there. And uh, let's start this off. So this is Salvage Run 2, in case you haven't already seen this. And let's just see how far we get. So the first wave always spawns over this way. Uh, so we just pretty much delete that. Eventually, after you've run this so many times, you will pretty much get the, uh, the order down. Oh, yep. That one always catches me off guard. It's always that one, and then it's this. There we go. Struggler. There we go. That pretty much gets us up to the double rounds, and then it's literally just as simple as this. Now, this is all being taken at 11.3k power. I do believe you can get faster if you uh, do increase your power level a little bit further. So, if you're lucky enough and you've got closer to 16k than I do, uh, then this will be obviously a little bit faster for yourself. But you can see within a minute, we're already up to around about round 13, which is kind of nutty and puts us in a good position. Uh, to be able to start taking the rest of this down. But Split Ender does so much work, and then especially once you get those group damage mods as well. But the stun really does come into its own once we get a little bit further in, and we start coming up against more of those elite nanos. Like I said, that was just unfortunate. We just didn't get two hits. There we go. Leave up now. So you go focus on the wee point, instantly deleted. And that's what we're looking for because, like I said, as soon as we start focusing in on a corpse uh, of one of these elites, we're just going to start struggling a little bit in terms of like time. See, that just eats up precious seconds, and we don't really want to start worrying about those at all. Tap him again. Now, sometimes the explosions will instantly knock them uh, and will put them in a down but not out stage. Uh, and there's not a lot you can do about that. Unfortunately, if that is the case, then, you know, that's what's going to happen on some of the earlier waves. But as you can see, it is just pretty much wiping the floor with everything. Um, we're already at wave 19. We've already got the max rewards within half the time, which is really, really nice. Uh, but yeah, we just essentially just keep going. And then, there we go. Now, it always makes sense to try and catch a wave as early as possible, because the bit earlier you can catch them, the more grouped up the enemies are going to be, and that really just helps us out with some of the AoE damage mods that we've got, uh, so it's just really nice. Uh, unfortunately, coming up against a couple of stragglers. But we should still be on for a good, a good run. 
it ironically gets a little bit easier to be able to pull off once they start having a bit more health uh, because they just don't really care too much about the uh, the explosions so they'll start shrugging it off a little bit easier Now another great mod that you can, can look out for in the exchange, which does work absolutely wonders with this build, is going to be something like Explosive Ricochet, uh, mainly because, like I said, all of this is going to be bullet damage. So therefore, because we're doing bullet damage, we're able to get some Explosive Ricochets that will go into the rest of the crowds. It will try and find another target for it to pop off. And then once it does that, it's just extra Explosive Damage. And it does pair really nicely with Parting Gift as well, because that also improves our Explosive Damage. So both of them do work wonders together if you can get them paired up. Uh, but uh, sometimes it's just luck of the draw being able to find those, unfortunately. Okay, off to a good start. Now the main thing to really take away from this is the fact that we haven't had to like worry too much about our armor. We're basically deleting everything before they get too close anyway. Um, so we're absolutely fine. It looks like we're not going to be able to push to 28 this time around. But yeah, as you can see, completed 27 waves, which is really, really nice. So just one off my personal best, and that was obviously the run that you managed to see at the start. But as you can tell, this is a really solid build. It helps you push into those later waves. And if you're looking to do that so you can try and grab some more floor loot like this to be able to help you out with some extra little bits, then this is basically the way to be able to do it, I believe. But of course, if there's any other strategies like this, feel free to leave those in the comments below. I'd be interested to try this out against something else that uh, someone else is working with uh, and just seeing how this kind of goes. And then hopefully between us as a community, we can actually see which is the best strategy to go for. And then everyone will be able to start rocking that so they can maximize their rewards. But there you go, that pretty much wraps it up on the video, so massive thank you for making your way to the end of the video. Like I said, in the comment section down below, leave me with your favourite strategies, what works for you, and then hopefully between us we can brainstorm something that works for everyone. Massive thank you for making your way to the end of the video, massive thank you to the Babylonian family as always for their continued support, it really does help the channel out, and if you did enjoy, make sure to drop that like and subscribe so you can find us ready for more sync content. But with all that said and done, that just leaves me to say, keep yourself safe, keep yourselves well, and I'll see you all on our next video.